Shalom, shalom, everybody. You're here once again with your brew. That's me, Bon Shemaya, the water. Thank you for being here with me today. Without further ado, we gonna get into this video. So today's video is going to be uh, from this guy right here called the Hebrew Israelite Movement did not start with Abba Bivens. Response to all ops. <laughs> The zeal of Zion, right? So let's get it. You won't find a video, you won't find a book where anybody is explaining when did the Israelites begin to wake in their captivity and know that they are the Israelites. Now, the captivity I'm speaking on is the one pertaining to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 68, the transatlantic slave trade. And when you look into the history, you'll find out that there was wars going on in America's called the Gullah Wars. This is the real reason why slavery ended. You had the dark Native Americans that was here and you had the slaves brought from the coast of Africa team up and start to go against the slave owners. They did not assimilate. This is when we began to rise. Then in 1810, when slavery was still going on, we established Israel Hill, which was pretty much a vigorous black community like a Wall Street that lasted all the way into the 20th century. Now, I'm pretty sure what that did was birth the mindset of Martin Robertson Delaney. What he started was the 1836 quest of a nationhood. Now, what he was really doing was advocating for a creation of a black Israelite nation, and he wanted the land to be somewhere in East Africa. <laughs> That's where Israel's at. Now, it's going to be somebody out there trying to discredit him, but guess what? This man was a physician who graduated from Harvard Medical School during slavery. Next, we got William Crowdy, who was born into slavery in 1847. He started the first Hebrew Israelite church. That's what it was called, the Hebrew Israelite church in the 1800s. Now, it was located in Kansas, but he was so successful, he ended up opening up churches across the whole nation. Now, this is Louis Tate, a.k.a. Mother Mary. Yes, a woman. And guess what she did? She started camps. So if you've seen, you know, Israelites on the corners, it started from a woman. It started from her. We could go back in the Bible and I could tell you who it started from. But if we're talking about here in America, it started with her. And what her church was called was the Church of Living God. Breaking into the 20th century, we got Wentworth Matthews, who actually came up under Lewis's taste church. He was actually a leader. He ended up starting the Commandment Keepers, which was a Hebrew congregation. Check out his congregation. And the guy on the top photo right there on your right, we're going to talk about him next. Now, the other guy that was in that last photo, that's Frank S. Cherry. And what he was known for was challenging religious believers to prove that the Jews was not black for $1,000, which is $25,000 a day. And he offered $10,000 to prove that Christ was not black. And you only could use the Bible. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Out of this church, you get the One West leader, Abba Bivens. He started One West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. The school was known as ISUPK. He was actually a churchgoer of Frank S. Cherry and of Wentworth Matthews. <laughs> now, I bet you thought I was going to start with him, huh? Nah, our history is deep. Shalom. All right, all right. So y'all saw that, man. So <clears throat> with that. There was a couple of things I wanted to go to, like the uh, Gala Wars or uh, also known as the Geechee uh, Wars, right? Uh, the Gullah Wars from 1739 to 1858. Says the Gullah Wars, the real war that ended slavery, otherwise known as the Seminole, Seminole Wars. Over a hundred year wars, black Seminoles, Gullahs who escaped from captivity. That's what it was about to say. So we're going to go back here. Matter of fact, let's see. Let's see if we could hear this. When the Gullah beat the U.S. in back to back wars. The Gullah won three wars against the United States in the 1800s. See, what had happened was the U.S. declared itself independent in 1776. That's when the states went from being colonies of Britain to becoming the United States of America. And I already had 13 colonies, but they were hungry for more. Now I'm pausing it right here because if you're wondering, how did we get to the 1800s when it says 1739? Because like she just declared, the U.S. declared itself independent in 1776. Before then, it was colonies, right? 
So it would have been the Gallus versus the colonies. It wouldn't have been considered the United States of America at that time. All right, let's keep it going. Problem was, Spain owned Florida and was not about to give it up so easy. They put word out that if black folk made their way to Florida from the low country, they'd be free from slavery. Now, Spain wasn't being righteous. They just figured that black folk would be their bodyguards. Florida was nothing but swamps and mosquitoes. Folk were catching malaria out there. It was hard living. But the Gullah Geechee who run away there preferred that than plantations. And they made the land livable, started families and intermingled cultures with Native Americans. White folks called them Seminoles, meaning wild or untamed. The more melanated ones were called Black Seminoles. Note, runaway slaves who established their own land and communities were known as Maroons. They were self-emancipated, meaning they freed their damn selves. There were maroon communities in Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, Nova Scotia, which is in Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Cuba, Panama, Brazil, etc. So when I say we all cousins, y'all, I mean that. In 1818, Andrew Jackson, who was then an army general, this was before he, was, he became president, he led the army to claim and colonize Florida. The Gullah and the Native Americans, a.k.a. the Seminoles, fought them and won. About 200 black Seminoles, according to Rosalind Howard's book called Black Seminoles in the Bahamas, they dipped from Florida to Androids Island in the Bahamas between 1821 and 1837. And, they, and that's because they didn't want to risk being enslaved again. An army general in 1826 wrote about the black Seminoles in Florida, and this is what he said. We found the Negroes in possession of large fields of the finest land, producing large crops of corn, beans, melons, pumpkins, and other esculent vegetables. They are chiefly runaway slaves from Georgia who have put themselves under the protection of the McCampy. 1818 actually wasn't the first time the U.S. tried to fight them. They lost so fast and so bad that they called the first couple times skirmishes, skirmishes. instead of wars. <laughs> it's like they were saying, we wasn't ready yet, so those don't count. The U.S. intentionally called them Indian Wars because they feared calling them Negro Wars would lead to slave riots. But they knew. In a letter to Jackson, Army General Thomas Jessup wrote, This, you may be assured, is a Negro, not an Indian War. And if it be not speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it on their slave population before the end of the next season. Now, Andrew Jackson became president in 1829 and signed the Indian Removal Act the following year. As a slave owner himself, he wanted to push the Native Americans out west and expand the cotton kingdom into Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, etc., George Washington figured the best way to deal with the Native Americans was to quote-unquote civilize them. The same way that Gullah Geechee was shamed into living and speaking more American than African, the Native Americans went through the same thing. But Andrew Jackson wasn't into civilizing. He proudly wore the nickname Indian Killer. Hmm. By 1836, he snatched all those southern states except Florida. The Seminoles weren't giving up the pride land easy. Jackson waged war against them again in 1835 and lost again. In 1842, the U.S. finally beat them and forced them out of Florida and onto the Trail of Tears into Oklahoma. Some stayed there, others went to Texas, and a good bit of them went to Mexico. Again, we all cousins. In 1845, Florida became the 27th state to join the USA. After the Second Seminole War, the U.S. decided to chill for a second and leave the remaining Seminoles in Florida alone. Then the president at the time, Franklin Pierce, he decided to get the rest of Florida too. So the third war popped off, but the U.S. ended up just paying the rest of the Seminoles to leave. They ain't want it. They ain't want no smoke. <laughs> In 1870, the U.S. recognizing that the Seminoles were hella strong and organized in war, inviting them to join the U.S. Army. They were called the Seminole Negro Indian Scouts. In 1978, Historians interviewed remaining scouts in Brackettville, Texas, and discovered that many of them still spoke Gullah and ate Gullah dishes. If you like this reading, you will love the book. So just hop over to cracktea.com to get that. All right, all right. So with that being said, uh, we also, uh, you know, they talked about Israel Hill 
And another thing I wanted to go into about, you know, our history is uh, Negro spirituals, which uh, from the research I've done, it started in the 1600s. So we've been knowing who we were the whole time we, we've been in this country. Uh, maybe not every person, because you got to understand some of us were turned into Islam or, or Muslims because of a uh, matter of fact there. I'm going to do a video soon about uh, a guy who came over here uh, and wrote a book about his coming over here in Arabic because he was a Muslim. They were conquered by the Moors in Timbuktu and a lot of them were turned into Islam. So, um, so it's not like everybody came over here knowing it. It's some people kept the history and then other people came over here and had already had their history overran, right? So <clears throat> that's one of the things I wanted to talk about was that uh, because when we talk about missing history, the Negro spirituals have been going since the, the 1600s. And though all the Negro spirituals were talking about us being saved, Christ coming to save us, uh, wade in the water, um um uh uh poor poor blind stranger right i'm poor i'm blind i'm weak right uh or poor wayfaring stranger um I'm trying to think i love negro spirituals but for whatever reason my mind is going blank <laughs> so without further ado we're gonna get into the scripture for today which is second timothy Four, and we're going to read one through four. It says, I charge thee before God and the Lord, Yeshua Wamasiach, or Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. So he's charging to preach the word, to do that, right? Preach the word. Be an instant, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, to expose, convict, reprove rebuke right to honor to make metal out do measure hence to censor right exhort to call or to call to or for to exhort to encourage right encouragement with all long suffering patience and long suffering in doctrine right teachings the word right for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and they shall be turned into fables. Right. So it's saying that they will have itchy ears. They says shall heap themselves teachers. So a lot of people call themselves teachers nowadays. Right. And the other people have itching ears like they just they want to hear somebody. You know, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers. So after they desire to speak, going to eat, uh, heap to themselves, going to make themselves, right? Heap to heap together. They're going to group themselves up with the teachers, having itching ears, right? A sense of hearing. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. So they will no longer be worried about the truth and shall be in shall be turned into fables you see so the truth of this the truth of our history and the truth of this word has been now made into fables like it's unbelievable it's fake right but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry right so it's saying that even though they try to make everything you saying out to be a lie it says, watch thou in all things. Keep an eye on everything, right? Endure infliction. So suffer evil or endure whatever you got to go through and do the work of an evangelist, right? A bringer of good news. And make full proof of thy ministry, right? Full proof to bring in full measure to fulfill. So make sure that when you're doing it for the ministry, that, that you're doing it in full measure. You're bringing the full measure of the word into the ministry. All right. So with that, that's the end, because that's what happened. Our history has now become a dogma or uh, and it's so crazy because people take little bits of history and they mix up the whole thing. Like it was it was uh, the Negroes and the some uh, who had left from the slave uh, slave masters, the slave plantations and the Seminoles uh, Indians 
who were darker skin as well who linked together during that time to create something right and they they blend they try to tear that out of history and destroy that out of our history so this is a shorter video i have another video coming out today uh the passover will be ending soon everybody i want to ask y'all how did y'all like y'all passover what did y'all do uh what did you eat uh everything like that just let me know in the chat man we got another video coming out later today it should be a good one keep an eye on that and uh <clears throat> i think it'll come out around six or seven this evening and without further ado, I just want to say if you like the video or if you didn't like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Uh, and everybody who is subscribed or haven't subscribed, let's hop in the comments and talk about this. Because I'm pretty sure there's other people who know uh, more about history than I may even know. So drop some things I might not know, man. Let's, let's talk about it in the chat. Maybe that'll get me to go look it up and do a video on that thing itself, right? So uh, with that, I just want to say the water, which means thank you. Thank everybody for watching. Thank you all. Right. Kaula Haya by Shimia Shaya. Wabawak Kodash, which is all praises to the Most High in the name of his son and, and uh, the Holy Spirit. Right. And I wanted to say Shalawam, Shalawam, which is peaceful greetings and Barakatha. Right. Which is bless you. Bless everybody for tuning in. Thank you. I appreciate y'all tuning in. And Peace. <laughs>